What's up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2023 Volvo XC90, courtesy of Younger Volvo Cars of Hagerstown in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so we are in this one today because there are actually, believe it or not, plenty of changes for the 2023 XC90. Not only that, of course, you have legendary safety with all Volvo Volvo's really I can tell you right off the bat this thing is an IIHS top safety pick plus which is the very highest rating given by IIHS that pretty much says it all right there but ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering fill ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels but I will say all of the trim levels have been reworked for the 2023 XC90 so there's no more momentum inscription in our design now you have the core b5 starting at $57,095 you have the plus trim level for $60,995 and the ultimate which is the one we are in today starting at $70,295 that was all for the b5 setup b5 and b6 being the engine types the b6 if you wanted to go that route simply add $4,900 to any of those prices so as I alluded to there are two different engine configurations configurations let's go ahead and touch on the b5 although we do have the b6 today b5 power plant is powered by a two liter turbocharged four cylinder with a mild hybrid system putting out 247 horsepower 5500 rpm 258 pound feet of torque coming in at 1500 rpm power sent to all four wheels through an eight speed automatic zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.3 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 22 in the city 28 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel and so like i said there is another engine setup and the b6 is the one we have today this one is powered by a two liter turbocharged four cylinder with a mild hybrid system yet again but this time 295 horsepower at 5700 rpm 310 pound feet of torque at 2200 rpm power sent to all four wheels yet again through an eight speed automatic zero to 60 time for this one approximately 6.4 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 20 in the city 26 on the highway again taking premium unleaded fuel and so but before before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our XC90, I wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes. All of those drive modes, by the way, can be accessed through the nine inch infotainment screen up front. We'll get a little more into that later, but drive modes you have to choose from will be eco, comfort, dynamic, and off-road, adjusting things like the shift points and throttle response, steering sensitivity, and actually the braking responsiveness, believe it or not, as well. I always find that interesting because you usually don't find that with other manufacturers, so it's kind of cool. But anyways, now have you got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the XC90 here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2023 Volvo XC90 here up to speed. All right, you guys, in three, two, one, off we go. Okay, no turbo lag, great. It's probably because of the mild hybrid system, that makes sense. Yeah, this thing is plenty fine. You're not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway. And like I said, the thing that surprised me the most being that this is a turbocharged four cylinder, you oftentimes do get turbo lag with turbocharged four cylinders. But I think because this has a mild hybrid system paired up with it, there was none of that. So it kind of felt like a naturally aspirated initial get up and go, which is a good thing. So I liked it. That is definitely a doable acceleration for the XC90. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 13.6 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 12.6 inch ventilated rear discs. As far as this six easier stopping distance goes, it's going to come in at an extremely impressive 113 feet. So just for a little bit of comparison, you guys, Volkswagen an atlas i this always sticks out of my head comes in at 139 feet my uh hyundai santa fe 2017 three row suv comes in at 132 feet uh, a lot of suvs will come in at the upper 120 so 113 feet is dang impressive that's like sports sedan good and you can tell you can when you instantly hit the brakes it's not a soft braking feel it's a firm braking feel which i personally prefer because it kind of goes along with volvo's kind of nature of being a safe vehicle because if you have to come to a quick stop you want to be able to actually do that and that's 60 zero stopping distance and 113 feet that's brilliant that is definitely where you're going to want to be at so 
absolutely love the braking feel on the XC90 without a doubt. Then touching on suspension and handling, up front you're going to get an unequal length control arm front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars of course. As far as ride quality goes, it's been fine. It's been perfectly fine. My short test drive here today, I will say Hagerstown roads are pretty on point though, but it's still been perfectly fine, so definitely no issues there. As far as steering feel goes, it feels like it's expected to feel, quite honestly. It's not a heavy steering feel. It's not a loose steering feel either, though, so it's pretty much right on point there. As far as cabin noise goes, I'm going 53 miles per hour, so I'll let you guys be the judge of that. You can probably hear just a slight bit of road noise, but really no wind noise whatsoever, which I'm definitely a fan of, but just a little bit of road noise, but it's not bad. It's definitely not anything that would bother me. And touching on visibility, it's decent. I will say it's decent. The, the only reason I don't say it's really good is because there's third row headrests in the back there. There's two seats in the third row and those third row headrests are absolutely massive. So they're definitely eating up a good bit of space back there. But other than that, it is pretty decent. And they would also mention rain sensing windshield wipers do actually come standard on the XC90. So that's definitely a big win right there as well. And a head up display is going to come standard on the ultimate that we have today. So right now, I'm looking at my speed currently projected onto my windshield. It's also gonna give you safety information, also the speed limit of any given road. So that's definitely gonna assist with forward visibility right there as well. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Volvo XC90. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2023 Volvo XC90 finished in denim blue metallic, a very popular color carried over from the 2022 model year, of course. But let's go ahead and start up front of the XC90 here. LED headlights with LED Thor's hammer daytime running lights to come standard, of course, across the board. Automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, the headlights will turn on automatically for you there. Also, automatic high beams coming standard for all different trim levels, meaning if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically then bump it back up to high beams. That's a very convenient feature there as well. Volvo Signature Front Grille also coming standard, and that comes, by the way, in either a bright or a dark finish, of course. So we have the bright finish, in case you were curious. I think that's pretty obvious, I guess. LED fog lights then down below with the cornering function, meaning those fog lights will bend a little bit around the corner dependent upon your steering angle. So that's a nice little safety feature there in itself as well. But overall, love the look of the front end as always, but that about rounds out the front end here. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so but now since we are around to the side of the XC90. Silver roof rails do come standard. Chrome window surrounds also coming standard. Rear privacy glass yet again coming standard. Body colored side skirts. I want to emphasize that because so many SUVs these days come with matte black side skirts and fender surrounds but the XC90 does come with body colored for both of those so that is definitely a very high-end look in my personal opinion and I love it. Illuminated door handles also coming standard body colored power adjustable side mirrors and by the way they will be heated with LED integrated turn signals for all trim levels across the board as well. Then take a look down at the wheel setup this is probably the easiest way to distinguish the trim level when you're walking around a Volvo lot. 19 inch six spoke alloys coming with the core trim level. 20 inch 10 spoke black diamond cut alloys for the plus and then 21 inch eight multi-spoke black diamond cut alloys for the ultimate so we do have those 21 inch wheels with us here today so again easiest way to tell the difference because there is a different wheel configuration a different size for each trim level across the board so that pretty much rounds out the side profile definitely a very nice look there as well now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the XC90. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, body colored shark fin antenna found all the way to the top there. Rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that. Rear window wiper affixed to that rear glass as well. Got the Volvo lettering spelled out horizontally. Always looks good. And of course the B6 as opposed to the T6 that was in the 22 model year. So you got the B lettering for the 2023 model year. So I don't think I mentioned that yet, but that is one of the changes as well. You do have some chrome accenting found kind of towards the lower portion of that rear bumper there and if you go all the way underneath you will find a single exhaust outlet tucked away on the passenger side there so having said that I do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip it's 
so but now since we are around to the back of the XC90 when it comes to opening that rear tailgate it is a hands-free power tailgate that does come standard for all trim levels across the board meaning all you need to do is just walk up to the back kick your foot underneath and it will automatically open up for you kind of on the driver's side you kick your foot underneath so definitely a very convenient feature if your hands are full with groceries or kids or whatever the case so I like that once it opened up cargo capacity comes in at 15.8 cubic feet behind that third row if that was not enough space of course the third row does fold down bumping that up to 41.8 cubic feet then with all rows folded that is going to come in at 85 point seven cubic feet which actually is a decent amount of space and pretty much on par for the segment when it comes to three row SUV so good bit of space there but also found in that cargo area there is a 12 volt power outlet there is LED cargo lighting typically you find halogens in the cargo area so I do like the LEDs back there grocery bag hook of course there is a cargo strap and if you look up underneath of that cargo floor you will actually find a spare tire under there as well but then making our way to the third row legroom that is going to come in at 31.9 inches so for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is uh so much space i had in that third row there and by the way again the third row seats two passengers as opposed to some of them out there that would seat three so i did want to emphasize that as well rear ventilation though does come standard for those third row passengers as well you got third row cup holders back there and there's a cool little storage area that has a cover over it for those third row passengers as well so i was actually a big fan of that they don't always come with covers i guess you could say so i do like that but so then making our way to the second row legroom that is going to come in at an even 37 inches so for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there four zone climate control by the way is going to come standard as well so both driver passenger and both rear passengers can set their own temperatures then as well heated rear seats can be available with a climate package it's called it goes for $750 gives you a heated steering wheel and I think one other thing as well so heated rear seats are available dual zone charging ports also coming standard back there and for those second row passengers you do have the option of either bench seating or captain's chairs now we do happen to have the captain's chairs of course but I did review the bench seating configuration last year and if you go with that route you actually do get a rear center armrest with cup holders for that bench seating setup but for our setup it's kind of like a stadium or theater style seating where it gradually goes up uh, as you go into the second and third row which i personally love i think that's pretty cool but those are your passengers look forward they actually do have dual phone charging ports back there and there are a couple cup holders for those second row passengers then as well but then make our way to the front seats eight-way power adjustable front seats do come standard you will get memory settings for up to three different drivers and by the way those memory settings are also on the passenger side so the passenger also has memory settings on their side as well which i thought was pretty cool leather seating does come standard heated front seats coming standard as well but the very best part about the seating overall is the little flag of sweden located on the passenger seat up front there so volvo always does that in all of their vehicles a little tribute to where volvos are made of course and i am always a huge fan of that and there is perforated ventilated seating up front available and we do happen to have that on our ultimate trim level here today and overall seating was all right not the very most comfortable seating i probably would still give that to lexus and I just say that because usually when you have horizontal seams, there are portions of the seating that sticks out further than others and with vertical seams typically there's no awkward pressure points and that's what i personally prefer but anyways to take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is manually adjustable it does come leather wrapped it is a two-tone steering wheel as well which i am a huge fan of and again with the climate package it will be heated then as well then make your way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you do have your volvo logo on the one side nothing on the other side because essentially all of your buttons are located on the side of the key you got lock unlock and again that button to pop the rear tail gate there but it is all keyless entry with a turn knob start not a push button start so i do want to emphasize that all i'm going to do here is simply put my phone on the brake and turn that knob to the right and by the way you also turn the knob to the right to stop or turn off the vehicle as well in case you were curious but once started up you will find a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster that will come standard across the board i absolutely love it, it as google built in so google maps located front and center speedometers all the way to your left tachometer on your right there's a digital speedometer as well it's going to give you different things like outside temperature safety features it is completely adjustable as well through the steering 
steering wheel mounted controls, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. The list goes on. I always love a digital gauge cluster and this one looks pretty dang good. And I think I've said that before with Volvo. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. There is a panoramic roof that comes standard. Charcoal headliner is available. We don't have that today, but I like our headliners perfectly fine. Aluminum trim inlays coming standard. However, there are wood inlays that are available like we have here in our Ultimate and it's a matte wood as well. So it has a nice texturized finish to it and that can be found on the doors as well as just above the passenger side glove box there. You can also find a frameless rear view mirror. So I always like when the rear view mirror is frameless and just underneath of it, you have homely controls for up to three different garage doors as well. Very high quality speaker covers by Harman Kardon. I found and that's surrounded by those matte wood inlays and I love those speaker covers. They are aluminum, they're not plastic. They look absolutely amazing. We'll test out the sound system here in a little bit. Just in front of the shifter, you have a little bit of storage. And speaking of the shifter, it is a Orfors crystal shifter and that, and that is going to come with the ultimate trim level but i always love the crystal shifters on volvos when they are equipped with them they only come on the top trim levels but they look so dang cool and they feel super high quality as well so always a big fan of that 12 volt power outlet a little bit of rubberized storage a couple cup holders then the center armrest there's a little bit of storage within that a couple phone charging ports in there as well but one thing we are missing is a wireless phone charger, apparently, unfortunately, so. Do want to mention that, but now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen. A nine inch color touchscreen display will come standard. Of course, Bluetooth and audio streaming coming with that. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay as well. Factory navigation system is going to come standard again that uses Google Maps, so that's the very best in my personal opinion. Climate control settings can be had up there, of course your drive modes as well, and the radio information. And so when it comes to the sound systems, you have two of them. One of them is going to be a 10 speaker sound system with 224 watts, which should be perfectly fine for the size of this vehicle, but then, there is the 14 speaker Harman Kardon sound system available for $800 with 600 watts. That is the one that we have today. So having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. You're definitely not going to have any issues with that sound system. Plenty of bass, plenty of clarity, and quite honestly, the perfect sound system for the size of this vehicle. Sometimes with three-row SUVs, the sound system isn't quite enough to hit all the areas of the vehicle. But with this one, the Harman Kardon definitely works very well with the XC90. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is... When you do put the XC90 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. But not only that, you will get a high definition 360 degree monitor as well. And this is one of the clearest rear view cameras that I have seen in quite a while out there right now. So I am definitely a huge fan of the rear view camera. And there's a bunch of different angles actually as well. So that's pretty cool. But anyways, that is always, it's going to lead us into safety. So as I alluded to at the very beginning of this video, IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the highest designation given by IIHS. So that pretty much does it all right there. It's the best you can get. Front side side current airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. A blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, autonomous emergency braking, adaptive cruise control, rear collision warning, and speed limit recognition then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the XC90, great styling. I always like the unique styling of the XC90 90 from the Thor's Hammer daytime running lights to the simplistic design on the interior. I think there's like seven buttons total because everything's done through the infotainment. So overall, interior and exterior design is great. Digital gauges, I'm always a big fan of those as well. This is an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. I'm going to keep saying it because it's the best you can get. Excellent braking. I think as far as the driving dynamics perspective and having driven over 600 cars at this point, this may be the very best braking when it comes to three row SUVs that I've tested. So do want to mention that I absolutely love it and that's a big deal for me because when you do want to come to a quick stop that has got to be on point of course really the only thing holding me back slightly from you know considering the XC90 if I were to for my family would be the questionable reliability and that's according to consumer reports if you look at one of their magazines but hopefully that continues to get better over time though because ultimately this thing is very extremely nice and it's from Sweden so it's rare at least here in the US as well 
well. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the XC90 in the comments section below. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media. If you wanted to see pictures of the vehicles before they actually make their way to YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.